Take time to meet with us and go over our product lines. Uh, the intent or the purpose of our conversation is not to uh, to make sure that you guys are going to become hairstylists by the end of this great conversation, but that you're going to go out there and open your own beauty supply store or whatever. It's just an understanding as to what are our brands, okay? How do we sell our brands? So the first thing that we got to do is to understand who is our target audience. So for example, one of the things that I do, I'm in charge of the uh, development of new international business. So the people that I'm talking to is not the store owner nor the final consumer, it's just the decision maker at some particular point in time for that country that we're trying to develop. As such, the people that you're talking to that come and buy products from you, it's not the people or the, the customer that is gonna ask you, so what does the curl activator do? Or what does this other product do? It's just that he wants to come in here and he says, I want cream of nature, or I want a lot of body, or for that particular reason, he can buy any other brand that you have out there. So you are in a position to influence what they buy by knowing exactly what our products do or don't do, okay? So the conversation today, and that's why I wanna call it a conversation, is gonna center more into what are our brands what are the functions of each one of our products. And yes, we're gonna get into a, a further detail as to which each product do, but I don't want you to think that you have to know all the little details. Just understanding the functionality of each category within the brand is necessary. By the way, you flip that over. That's how I, you know, when I saw that, that's why you're gonna go to see the correct one. So anyway, like I said, thank you for being here with us. The first thing that is uh, necessary to understand, well, hair is hair, okay? But what you gotta really take a look at it is the fact that there are different, four types of different types of hair. The first one is straight hair. Under any type of uh, configuration, this is more or less what a straight hair looks like. So, brief description. Greasy, oily, limp, lifeless, freezy, boring. All adjectives we hear to describe straight hair, but there's beauty in straight hair too. If you wash your hair every day, and have an addition to dry shampoo, it's likely you fall into this straight strand group, okay? Uh, what I like about this uh, slice is the fact that it shows you three different types of women. They have uh, black, brunette, and blonde, if you want to call them. They all have straight hair. So the first category is type one, straight hair. Type two, wavy hair, okay? There's a reason why I'm going through all of this so you will understand the differences in type of hairs and the type of brows that they need, okay? Most people consider the girls with natural waves to be the lucky ones. They have the perfect happy medium between curls and straight hair, but it can be tough to get waves to behave. It's already telling you the type, different types of hair, the different type of brows that they gotta be using. Without, without the right combination of brows, the windings the strand can fall flat meaning that wavy, instead of having the perfect brows, it will just fall flat. Um, I believe that you will probably fall under this type of hair, wavy yeah. hair. Mm -hmm. The last, uh, third one is curly hair. So, over the past decade, it has been the resurgence of the curly girl. Numerous big brands have been coming out with brows geared towards ringless and spirals. If you fall into the type three, three type group, we got five words for you put the blow dryer down, okay? <laughs> what is really interesting is that you will see the relationship of these descriptions to our products, okay? This is, um, it is, this is an oversimplified slide of the real definition of type, types of hair out there. The last one is our bread and butter, type four, coily hair. Type four hair is the kinkiest, coarsest, and driest of all hair types. Because of the many twists and turns of this texture type, it is very hard to get moisture to the scalp and maintain shine. The hair also tends to shrink down, making it very hard to determine the actual length of the locks. But despite all the natural hair problems, there's nothing more show-stopping than an oversized apple. True, you see some women walking out there that are just, I mean, mm -hmm. here they are. 
The reason why I've gone to the description is because you're going to see the relationship or the functionality of our products to each one of the categories of types of hair that there is out there and available. So, having said that, let's talk about the Naturalista hair movement, which is what really drives this entire category of eggnog hair. So the definition is very simple. Natural hair is hair whose texture hasn't been altered by chemical strengtheners, including relaxers and texturizers. An Afro hairstyle is sometimes referred to as a natural. But natural black hair can be worn in many other styles besides a short fro. Pressed hair might still be considered natural because once washed, the texture usually returns to its unaltered state as long as no heat damage has occurred. That's the definition of natural hair definition. What are the characteristics of natural hair? And this is where we begin to get everything, uh, how it relates to what we've been talking about. In terms of natural black hair, there is no one size fits all. When it comes to texture and growth patterns, but in general, natural black hair usually ranges from wavy to kinky coily. Uh, coi so that means that types two, three, and four are considered natural hair. Here's the kicker with a wide range of variation between the two. And yes, some black people have naturally straight hair as well. What this is telling you is that our products are basically for all hair types, okay? The definition of the, of the hair in itself for the, for the products relate to the way that we down our product lines. If I may add something here, just as quickly, is that at the end of the day, in all of your shoppers and all of your shoppers, sorts of things at the end of the day. When it comes to products, really for a woman, it's about making the woman feel beautiful with what she buys at the end of the day. So finding the right product for her is extremely important. And so, you know, while he went through the categories of it, and they may fit a category, really it depends on how they're wearing their hair and what they feel they need and what's important to them. So a lot of times when I talk to women and they're kind of talking to me about, you know, well, what does this do or how does this do, a lot of times I ask them, what do you want? What, what are you looking to achieve? And then let me tell you what I have in my portfolio that will help you achieve where you want to go. Not me telling you where I think you should go by a certain product, but let me tell you what I have in the portfolio based on your wants and needs. And I think that's really important a lot of times, you know, in our end of it when we're talking to people. I know like it shows and such. That's extremely important because that's really, you walk into an OTC store, you listen in an OTC store, and a lot of women walk in and say, I want to have this, or I want to have my hair look like this. And that's where that key point of differentiation is, making sure that people know all the SKUs that are available to them to have that happen at that point. So it's a really important differentiation, and I think as we continue to move forward, you're gonna see more and more of that is, what makes you feel beautiful? What do we have that helps you feel beautiful? That's where the sales are gonna come from at the end of the day. Correct. So, Let's talk about Cream of Nature, okay? The, the Cream of Nature is really composed of three brands, okay? So we have Argan, and within Argan we have our, our, our Argan Oil Baseline and Argan for Natural Hair. And we're gonna be talking about the different uh, distinctions right now. We have our Certified Natural Ingredients Line, and we have Cream of Nature Straight from the Oil. What is really important to understand is, so what about Cream of Nature? So, it's been the first ethnic brand with argan oil. Argan oil offers consumers the hottest new ingredient at an affordable price point. We rank the number four uh, brand, ethnic brand in the country. Double digit growth each year since launch. So by itself, human nature in the United States really stands on its own. Okay? What's really important to understand is that the natural market for Caribbean sales is probably what, 75% export? Well, I tell you what, Revlon is a very strong brand out there in the world. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I push first when I'm talking to somebody uh, internationally is Revlon, what I talk to about Cream of Nature by Revlon. So you really have a double impact right here. A line that has been created for black African-American women has taken a hold of the American market on its own Cream of Nature by Revlon. So that in itself should start giving you some tools to start selling our product lines, okay? And I will kind of, again, I'll segue back to what I said earlier about making a woman feel beautiful, is that we have some other markets globally as well that we sell to where we go head-to-head -head against other Argonne brands 
within that country. So it's not all about us being a ethnic brand or even a multicultural brand. There are places globally that I sell where we go heads up as an Argon brand or an Argon styling line as well. And again, focusing on that, that we have products, no matter what your hair type, that can make you feel beautiful. So it's been one of the hurdles for us to cross, but as we've crossed it, we've seen success in it at this point by not always positioning us because sometimes very much even an image causes somebody to think exactly what your brand is. So internationally and even on our international websites, we take down almost all modeling and images off of those websites completely in order that we're not stereotyping ourselves into those markets. This market in the U.S. will always be our bread and butters inside of the ethnic brand because that's what we grew up with and that's what the hair and brand is. Outside of the U.S. where you do a lot of business, it's positioning the brand properly in market to obtain the best sales that you can within that market. And who are you going head to head with? Who's the other brands that you want to compete against? And what do our items really do? And really I'll close with this in this portion of it is that most people forgot that Colomer was a $550 million organization with 37 different brand lines worldwide. Many of our formulas where we start with are beginning at global formulation points that are tweaked for the market. So when I talk about what's needed for the hair or what's needed for the market, that's where we're at with it. So sometimes people look at this and get one image and go, oh, it's a certain brand because it's an image. Well, a lot of the stuff starts at the same base point at the end of the day. And there are tweaks to it in order to meet moisturizing needs or meet certain styling needs at the end of the day. But you can pick up a bottle of Perfect 7 and if you have hair in this room, you can use Perfect 7 on your head. It doesn't discriminate at all. That's discrimination. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know if you let yours grow out, I can see it from the side there. If you let it grow out, I would definitely <laughs> can use it there as well. But again, it's just a, it's a little different mind of thinking because you do so much international business. It is a way to make sure you're positioning properly for the most sale opportunity that you can have within that market. And don't let other people close you down just because of No, somebody. this one is one of yeah, the ethnic yeah. lines we can use for all yes. time. Yeah. Uh, brief observation, Andy and I just came back from Poland where we are about to close a deal with Poland. Uh, one of the things is, and without any prejudice on, on, on my side, I made an observation to Andy at the end of the day. Did you see a black person there? Uh, to back in the wars, but we did not see a black single black person. But the people that we we're talking to, when they started looking at our product lines, they said, yes, this the hair hairstyle, the wavy, this is what we want, the argon, revenue. So there is a market beyond the ethnic market. There are many ads in, in Poland that depict a woman with wavy, curly hair in that market. And how does she get it at the end of the day? She still has to have styling products for a lot of time or products to use on her type of hair. So again, it goes back to the exact same thing as to what's her curl pattern, what does she need, what does she need to be successful in making the product make her feel beautiful, and can she buy it at the right price point? Okay. So what you foresee in the market is the, the curly hair coming back? I think, it, well, definitely in the U.S. market, the naturalista has been the fastest growing category in the